So you've probably heard the words climate change many, many times. Climate change is a topic that adults have been talking about for a long time. In part one of climate change, we talked about the warming of our planet. On part two, we're going to talk about the role regular citizens are having on eco-science. Hi, I'm Campbell Barron, and today I'm going to talk to you about citizen science. A dire warning this morning from climate experts. Every day we don't adapt is a day we don't have. The very livability of our planet is at stake. We are all in this together. So it's winter here in Newmarket, Ontario, and it's well below freezing. But that's pretty normal for this time of year. But over the last hundred years, forecasting temperatures in northern climates has become a little bit less predictable. And that's partly because of climate change. Citizen scientists help scientists by observing the many little things that are clues to climate change. For example, they might count how many birds leave their backyard in the fall and come back in the spring. Or they might record how many days in the winter a backyard rink stays frozen. To better understand citizen science, I visited a family in Newmarket, Ontario, who participates in a website called RinkWatch. What is RinkWatch? RinkWatch is a bunch of backyard enthusiasts uh, like myself that have rinks. Um, basically what we do is we collect data and we submit it to the RinkWatch website and it helps track uh, climate change and you know, the uh, different effects and stuff of your, your backyard rink with the weather changes. So what are some of the specific observations you've noticed this season uh, involving RinkWatch? I think it was just the, uh, the thaw we had maybe a few weeks ago. Um, definitely how long it took to kind of recover from that. Um, whenever we have a thaw, they kind of keep an eye on it as well to see how much water is on top of the ice and that's yeah, just kind of little things like that. I'd say we probably do about three, four or five entries a season. So, Tell us about your rink here. Um, we really like to like skate around and we like to do all the drills and shoot pucks and play games. Uh, have you ever heard the two words climate change before? Yes. Can you just describe what it is briefly? It changes when like the weather gets hotter and when it's winter and, and the rink will probably melt. So how does the data you're collecting affect the next generation, your kids, involving climate change? Well, I think it's uh, for the future. Um, obviously, maybe 10, 15 years down the road, we'll better understand maybe climate change and a simple project like this. It's, uh, you know, it's something fun, but it can help you know, understand the, uh, the long-term effects of everything that's kind of going on right now. In order to better understand citizen science, I want to talk to the Canadian climate change legend himself, David Suzuki. Hi, I'm David Suzuki. Uh, I'm in Vancouver. And you have obviously been a big climate change uh, activist way before it was even talked about. Why is climate change as a subject, why is that important to you? Climate is just a part of an expression of the atmosphere. The atmosphere gives us the air that we breathe. The atmosphere gives us weather and climate. Pretty important for human beings and all uh, animals on the planet. If you were describing what citizen science is to a kid, how would you describe it? Science is just a way of looking at the world in a certain way with certain rules. But the other really important aspect of science is observational. Any observations that we make as citizens, let alone as scientists, adds yeah. to this little bit of, of knowledge that we have. Citizen science is a very, very important component uh, informing us about the, the world that we live in. Okay, so right after I talked with David Suzuki, I had a chat with someone who's been involved in citizen science from a very young age. Who are you and what do you do? My name is Mia Otokiak. I'm 22 years old and I'm from Cambridge Bay, Nunavut. Mia works as a junior technical advisor for the Nunavut Impact Board. But she started out at just 15 as a student citizen scientist collecting snow data. How did it make you feel to contribute to citizen science and be a citizen scientist as a 15 year old? I, I never would have thought that at 15 years old I'd be considered a scientist. It was such an amazing and empowering feeling to be able to be a citizen scientist in my home community and working with local community members. It was extremely important. Can citizen science connect Inuit traditional knowledge um, with climate change research? I'm actually um, a part of a program called Ikarvik. And this program started in Nunavut, and it's all about bridging 
Inuit traditional knowledge and science. So having that traditional knowledge work with science in such an amazing way that shows that they can both benefit each other is beyond words. Whether you live in a town like Newmarket, a city like Vancouver, or an inlet like Cambridge Bay Nunavut, climate change will affect your way of life. On part three of the series, we're gonna talk about what Canada might look like in years to come. In the meantime, do you have any questions or ideas about climate change? Send us an email to cbckidsnews at cbc.ca. I'm Campbell Barron for CBC Kids News.